Okay. All right, everyone. So welcome to our company introduction webinar. This time we have our good partner, Master Media. So we have a little of a history with the company already and know it pretty well. But the students who are working on the Master Media Challenge this semester don't. And so we organized this webinar with the company founder to learn more about the company, its business, business model, uh, the current operations uh, principles and approaches, uh, but also the kinds of challenges the company sees and uh, the kinds of help uh, the, the students can provide to the company. And so here with us are first and for foremost, uh, the company founder, Markin Wisolowski, uh, sorry, Michael Wisolowski, my apology. Uh, so, and then the host of the show is Tim Muth, assisted by Shristi Kundaparty. And so I'll turn the microphone to Tim so he can lead the webinar. And uh, so we will start probably with a short introduction of the company and then move on to questions and answers. I see we have quite a few students in the audience. So students, you can ask your questions at any time by either putting them in the Q&A window or in the comments, or don't feel shy to raise your hand. You have a button, raise hand, and join us here and talk to us uh, directly. So, and perhaps just as a test of the technology, if you can put in Q&A or in chat, your current location where you're located so that we know a little bit our geography here. So for example, I'm in North Carolina, so I'll put that here. Um, and I know uh, Tim and Sristi are in uh, Florida and Mikhail is uh, in Poland, I assume. So we have yeah. several states, several continents. So if you could put yours there as well, so we know that you can hear us and you can leave the comments, but also just curious what states we have represented here. So, and Tim, uh, the microphone on to you. Thank you, Voss. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're from. Uh, this is gonna be a very exciting webinar. That, as uh, Voss said, we got to meet this company and uh, visit their facilities over the summer, which was, it was both a joy and it was a, a heartache for me because we had four companies that we were working with. This one was by far the most popular. I gave the students a big lunch and food. So all the other students were fighting about that. But uh, I think you will find Master Media a very interesting company and the opportunity that they're, they're uh, presenting to you a very uh, challenging and uh, insightful kind of uh, opportunity and challenge for you to work on. And with that, let me turn it over to Michael. He, let, he can introduce himself much better than me and talk about the company. Go ahead, Michael. You're, you're... Hi, guys. My name is Michael Wasilowski. I'm responsible for all the sales in Master Media in all the markets in the world. Um, our model, what you have is basically open to, we have two warehouses in Poland. We deliver the goods to our warehouses in Europe right now. And from those warehouses, we supply stores every week or twice a week, depends on what they need. But right now, Master Media is focusing more going global and not only operating on the markets that we already know, which is UK, Ireland, uh, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, and Scandinavia. We are looking for different places so we can operate in a different model. We can operate with the uh, deliveries directly from our warehouses in Poland to warehouses, wherever our client needs to go to via plane or ship or truck or whatever possible way. Actually, we're mostly focusing on food and uh, fast movable goods, uh, which you can find in the supermarkets. But we are open to, to different assortment. If there's gonna be a possibility of a business in different assortment, we are open to that as well. So this is our basically operation model. Uh, we have sales representatives on the market that we're already working for, which is about 31 person right now. And uh, we have around 800 employees, both in Poland and other uh, other places in Europe. Michael, can I ask you a quick question? In terms of food, do, do you concentrate on Polish food? Uh, this is what we started from, right. but it's right now it's not only Polish food. We have a lot of Romanian products, basically European, Romanian, Ukrainian, uh, so Central European products. But as well, we are looking for opportunities from all over the world. So we are actually buying some products like from, we can buy products from Italy, we can buy for products from Asia and sell it wherever uh, you need. So it's not only Polish products. And 
a lot of products we treat as Polish, but it's like Polish Coca-Cola it's, doesn't mm -hmm. differ than the Coca-Cola you have in States. Maybe it's a little different, but mostly it's pretty much the same product. So it's the same with chips, uh, the same with flour and stuff like that. So basically we sell all food. So it's not only Polish products, basically food. Um, I don't know if, if you need anything else for the start. I think Q, uh, questions right now would be would be best. Yes, so quite a few students ask about a little bit more about the history of the company. So basically yeah. how, how, how you came about to start a company like this. How did your business uh, develop over time? Um, is it only you or it's a series of partners who work on the business? So tell us a little bit more, you know, how it all began and how you ended up where you are now. Uh, so Master Media was established in 2006 by three uh, partners. Um, they were working, one of them was working in Poland and uh, they had a small uh, shop with food and the other was working in the UK. He was painting walls, basically. Uh, and because they knew each other, they were cousins, they talked to each other and, and the guy from the UK said that there's uh, a lot of Polish stores or stalls with Polish food in the UK. So maybe we can do something like that. And the idea started. Uh, so the guys who were in Poland, they were buying products in Poland, driving a truck to the UK, then went to sleep. And the guy from the UK were sitting in the truck and going to the stores himself, uh, sell the, the things that he had on the truck, then come back home. The other guy who was waking up who was going straight to Poland. And those are the master media owners. And they started from the small truck like that. Uh, after a while, uh, it was not a truck, it was a, a big truck, then it was two, three, so on, so on. So they decided to open a warehouse in London, which was our first warehouse, and they started to delivering products from Poland to our warehouse in London, and then from there to deliver uh, directly to the stores. And for a few years, for at least seven years, Master Media was only on the UK market, so it was only from Poland to the UK. Uh, then uh, we decided that it's also there are Polish stores in the Netherlands. So the second market was Netherlands, which was pretty much the same. We started going direct track from Poland to Netherlands. Then we opened a warehouse there. And then we started employing more and more people and the more and more, more, and more stores. And it grew uh, so much that we couldn't uh, sell everything from the one uh, warehouse in Poland. So we decided to open another warehouse closer to the border. That's why we opened Poznan Warehouse. And then it was another country. Then it was Belgium, then Ireland. Then after Ireland, we went to Germany. And uh, last year, we opened Scandinavian market. And it was basically just growing and growing and growing, having more people than we want. Uh, 2012 was pretty important because we start our uh, selling platform. It wasn't an Excel sheet anymore. It was a direct B2B platform when the people could uh, order themselves and it was much easier. And uh, it really get, uh, generated a pretty big boom because stores can, you know, didn't have to wait for somebody who comes from the company who can place their order whenever they want it. And it gave us big boost. And two years ago, we introduced new platform, which allows you to, uh, place orders by your phone. So everything's mobile right now. You can walk through store and just scan the products that you have on the shelf and order the new one. If you're missing an item, you can just write it down a name uh, like milk or Coca-Cola or whatever. And then you can order directly from your phone. So everything's changing, but the, the model is pretty much the same. So we're working for, from our warehouse in Poland. The people are ordering goods. We have those goods in stock in Poland. It goes from the warehouse in Poland with the big trucks to our warehouse in the UK, Ireland, uh, Netherlands, or whatever else. And then uh, by smaller trucks is delivered directly to the to the stores itself. So for all the students watching or listening to the video, that there is a document out on the uh, X Culture website with uh, the master media background. But that was written by none other than Shristi here, along with help from Michael and Marta, one of his colleagues, who will give you a lot of background. But one thing I want to emphasize is 
and, and Michael, help me if I'm wrong here, but pretty much you guys are food wholesalers. You buy from one yeah. company. We buy from the producers and we're selling to, to the stores. Uh, we're mostly buying directly from the producers, but some of the goods we're buying from distributors in Poland because the big concerns like Nestle, they don't really want their products to be taken from Poland to the other market because they sell the products on the other market. So in those cases, we have to buy from the distributors in Poland, but 90% of the stock we're buying directly from the producers in Poland, Ukraine, uh, Romania, or whatever else. We also have a private brand right now, and it's it's growing. We started with the cold meats. We're right now thinking about uh, introducing other categories. So we have our private label, which is selling quite well right now, and uh, it's growing. So this is probably the area that we're going to work on and continue growing. Uh, we're thinking all the time about new categories. Uh, uh, we establish lately alcohol, chemical products, cosmetics, and stuff like that. So we're expanding uh, Master Media is selling around 11,000 right now, and it's growing. Yeah, I think that's an important point that Michael's very calm today. We met him in person. He's a very, very aggressive gentleman, as is the company. That pretty much anything we can sell, make a profit for, we're going to take on. That growth is very, very important. I think when you read the document also, the philosophy of the company is aggressive, growth-oriented. You know, show us an opportunity, we'll, we'll make it work. And I'd, I'd urge you as you look at this challenge, yes, they're talking about food today, and it, you know, buy, buy, sell kind of stuff, and that's the heart of their business. But this could be so much more. And also the markets they're in today are relatively limited, but their ability to, to expand is almost unlimited in terms of their ability to take the risk, to make the investment, to go learn new markets. And Michael, if you want to say anything there about yeah, new markets. Yeah, right now we, we have actually no limits because of the Brexit a few years ago. Exactly. <laughs> we have to we have to change our our uh, you know uh, our way of doing things because it was European Union only. But since the UK uh, decided to leave European Union, we have to know all the export things, all the documents and stuff uh, which was there. We have to change it and prepare it for the export from European Union outside European Union. And for us right now, it doesn't really matter if it's going to be UK or it's going to be states or it's going to be Asia. We can deliver pretty much anywhere. We have companies who work with us as a transportation. So we already sent products to the uh, Northern America. We already sent products to the to Asia, to Hong Kong. So right now there's no limits actually. And when we find a, a place that is a good opportunity, we try to seize it as far uh, as soon as possible and to make a big impact. Like Scandinavia started last year, with like two and a half million Polish Lotus states, which was small. This year it's already at 12 million and the next year should be at 30. So it's it's growing rapidly. And so when we take a market like that, we're looking for ideas, take a market and then expand it as much as possible. Mike, Michael, I ask you a question about customers, your customers. Like in, in uh, England, there's a big food store called Tesco, I think. In Germany, Aldi, in France, Carrefour, U.S., we got, uh, you know, a couple of big grocery chains, Walmart. Would, would those be your customers or is it a different tier that you would go after? There are our customers, but it's a different tier because uh, our main core is the individual stores. Of course, there are some owners who own like 10, 15 stores, but yeah. most of them is, uh, they call it traditional market, which is not like huge supermarkets like Tesco. Uh, but... Uh, Tesco or other chains are, of course, a big chain, and uh, they have they have little Polish products. They don't have as much because Polish store in the UK has approximately about three to five thousand Polish products on the shelf. Tesco has about five hundred, maybe four hundred products, okay. but of course, there's a lot of Tesco, and they'll they'll sell a lot. So there are our clients, but we don't sell directly to them because most of our clients would uh, treat it as a Treason of some sort uh, that we are, uh, you know, yeah. focusing on them so they can uh, get them out of the market. So we have our partners that we're selling directly to them, and they're delivered to Tesco, Asda, uh, or to German uh, stores as well. So we have our partners. We are already in shelves in Tesco, in Asda, in Sainsbury, Morrison's, a lot of big chains. But it's a totally different channel. We have different people who are focusing on that. It's working differently because it's a uh, 
smaller amount of products, uh, bigger volumes, a uh, little different business than our core business. But of course, for us, it's very important because they're doing great volumes. So we have to focus on them as well. Teresa, do you have a couple questions there? Yes, I have some questions from okay. me and Dr. Boss. Um, so we want to know more about your marketing strategy and are there any strategies that you really like and have been working for you and some that you did use in the past and then have been discarded or they don't work anymore? Yeah, we actually have to prepare a few different strategies because we gonna we have right now strategy for every single country that we operate because there are different strategies like in the UK, the market of Polish products, it's not growing anymore. It's actually falling a little bit. It's pretty stable, but it's falling a little bit. So our strategy there is uh, to take some uh, volumes from our competition. So we're heavily on uh, pricing, heavily on fighting with competitions and doing the things like that. On the other markets like Scandinavia, where we're opening right now, it's we are just uh, focusing more on showing who's master media, how we work, uh, to show them that we can build a long relationship as, uh, as partners in business because they don't know that that much. We are only two years there and we need to have a different strategy. In the UK, we are 17 years on the market. People who run the business, they know who's master media. So we need to have a little different strategy than the other markets that we're introducing. And right now, as I told you, we are looking for different markets that we are not existing in. So we're uh, going to a lot of uh, meetings with the guys who are responsible for other countries. We are going to the events like in three weeks times, we're flying to Germany for a big event, uh, which is gonna be people for all over the world who are responsible food products and stuff like that. So we are preparing special marketing, uh, some kind of catalogs, some digital uh, films and stuff like that. So we can show, we can introduce our company. We can show that we are global, that we can deliver the products whenever they need. Uh, our big advantage is that when you're working with the producer, they want like the whole palette of product. And if you want to work uh, with the Polish stores, you need like 20, 30, 50 producers. And if you need to order every single palette, it's too big for a small store. But what we do is you can order a case of a product from different producers. So we can send you a mix of products. So you can have like 150 products on one pallet. So if you're opening a store somewhere or you want to sell European goods somewhere, we're the best to start with because we can deliver you a small, small amount of products and then you can see what's selling best. You can then increase the numbers of the products that you're selling. So we would like to introduce people to this kind of model of working because it's pretty unique on the market because most of the people who are focusing on export products, they're focusing on big volumes of the single products. We are totally opposite. We're focusing on the small amounts of products so you can taste it and then figure out what is most important for you. Of course, if you want bigger amounts, it's not a problem. We can do that as well, but we are uh, very flexible in this matter. So I, I believe this is a good idea. And this is what we are focusing on the strategy to introduce Master Media, to show its flexibility, to show on how, how as many events as we want. We are focusing right now on the uh, Northern America. So we are probably gonna go to the events in States and Canada uh, to introduce the uh, master media there to find partners who we can work because for now we're looking for partners to work. We don't wanna go directly to the US and invest there in warehouses and stuff. We would like to find a partner, then start this uh, market and then we'll see where it goes from there. Michael, could you explain that partner? So, say you come to the United States and, and you want to try to penetrate East Coast of the United States, from New York down to Florida. So you guys would, would have the, the food products ship in some place to the U.S., then the partner would do what from there? No, we're looking for partners. Like, we started this in Norway right now. I told you in the Norway example, and it's going to be pretty much okay. the same in the U.S. So... Um, when we went to Norway, we find there is not enough Polish stores that we can work directly with them. So we were looking for partners who are responsible for supplying those stores right now that exist and supplying some other places like modern trades, modern uh, stores like Tesco itself and stuff like that. Okay. We find few of those partners. We meet with them. We show who's master media, how we operate, and we pick two of them to start working with them. And we 
uh, basically, we are selling products to their warehouse, and from the from their warehouse to the stores, it's their business. Gotcha. Uh, we, we have an agreement that we don't work. We're not going to work directly on this market. We don't want to be competition with them, but we there well, we will choose like one or two partners. It depends on the big how big is the market. We choose those partners. Uh, we build the relationship, we sell them the products, we give them the prices, we give them the translation, whatever they need from our part. Uh, so so for them, it's like easy business for them because if they have like 50 stores with their operate, we can prepare products directly for those 50 stores, deliver it to their warehouse, and all they have to do is just pick the pallet and put it to the store. And when it's going to be, everything's going to be ready. We give them platform for the store so the platform can order uh, on a B2B platform, they don't need to do anything themselves from the uh, internet or, or from the ordering point of view. We prepare the order, we get the invoice, everything's ready. For them, it's just to ship from their warehouse to the stores, and that's it. Okay. So you make life easier for them. Maybe they get yeah. a little bit better prices, but very much and okay. Because that's right it. now, how they operate, they have to buy it from the producer. They have to contact like 30 or 50 producers. They have to buy big amounts, which is not always selling well. So then they have a problem with the products because if they buy, bought a whole pallet and like five cases sold, they need to do something with the rest. And, you know, it's it's food, so it's not long lasting. It's, no. it's usually about six to nine months. So they have a problem with that. And we offer them, you can order a few cases, just see what your people need and then you can expand and you can go and they don't have to, you know, uh, contain themselves to like 300, 500 products. We offer them 11,000 products so that you can choose whatever you need. You want milk? We have 50, uh, you know, 50 different milks. Choose one, whatever one. You don't know which one. We can tell you that from the 1,000 customers that we have, the best selling Polish milk is this one. Mm -hmm. And if you need the information like that, we can supply you with. You want to start with chips? We can tell you, those are the five flavors the most sold by us. And it's not our opinion. It's an opinion of 1,000 customers all over Europe. So it's pretty uh, pretty good for them, even if they want to start a business, not own uh, actual business, but they want to start a business like that. And some of them do. Right. Just to take the example of the United States a little bit further, the, the partner, would they initially bring you on? I mean, all the advantages you bring about... Well, is it because the stores they service have a need for certain Polish foods? Or is it now pretty much that they would buy anything from you because they get a better deal from a service standpoint? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit of both, actually, because right now, uh, as far as we know, there are some partners that are already working with Polish stores, but they have pretty narrow range, which is, like right. I said, around 300, 400 because of the uh, reasons I, I told you before. And first, we want to offer them better terms on those products because we are big and we're buying a lot in Poland, so we can give them better terms. That's one thing. And we also can show them that they can easily, uh, you know, make a bigger range with us because we can make it easy for them. And um, so it depends on what they need. If some of them they need just better prices and better margin, that will go this direction. If they want to expand uh, and deliver more products, we can do it as well. So it depends on actually on, on the partner itself, how it works. Because if they work with the modern chain like Tesco, the Tesco is not changing the products that they have in store like day by day. They do right. it usually like once a year, twice a year at most. So it's not that easy to expand the range. But if you're working with, like with independent stores, they can change the range like next week. So they can make an order from us and we can expect the range pretty quickly. So it depends on who are they working with. Okay. Okay. Christy, other questions there? Um, we have a single question from oh. Nana Saki. Um, she they say, uh, where did where did you say that they had your first warehouse established again? They just wanted a refresher on that. The first warehouse was established in London because we were working from a distributor in Poland. We don't we didn't own our warehouse in Poland for a few years. But uh, we owned our warehouse in the UK, in London, uh, because uh, at the beginning, the guys were doing this like this. They were going to a parking lot uh, outside of the store. They come in by truck, taking out the pallets, and they were guarding the pallets before the next truck will came. So, <laughs> And it was working like that for a few months, actually. Uh, 
uh, after after that they bought uh, a chilling container which was uh, on this parking lot and then uh, after a few months when they realized they cannot do it anymore they uh, they rented a warehouse in the first where, where warehouse were in london uh then the second one was in lublin in poland and then from there we went uh, two more warehouses in the uk the next was netherlands the next was ireland and the last one is going to be germany which is going to open this year oh wow very very cool oh we Michael, have... another question you sort of have in my mind two businesses one is one you've been describing where you're a reseller you buy and you sell but in the uk you started your own um chain of stores, Food Plus. Do you see that as something you would consider in other markets or is that a one-time kind of thing? No, we established Food Plus in 2016, actually. Okay. Uh, it was what the market needed because because uh, that's how it works. Like those big chains like Tesco, why are they good? Because they can take a decision and make a promotion for like 600 stores at once. And that was something that was missing in the traditional market because the bigger owner, the biggest owner in Master Media owned like 12 stores. Right. So they couldn't buy enough volume to be interested for the producers to do that. So we decided to do something like it was in Poland. When you get a group of stores and in, we have like 200 stores for the Food Plus chain right now, when you take 200 stores and tell a producer that you want to make a promotion for 200 stores, he's going to give you much better uh, uh, terms to, to buy the products. And that's what we established for. But um, I don't know if we do it on other markets. It was necessary for the UK because we have around 700 clients over there and 200 of them is in Food Plus chain because they, they believe that we prepare better marketing, better prices, better things for the customers, uh, all the social media commercials and stuff like that. It's necessary for them. But for the other markets, like I told you, we work country by country. And if we have like in uh, Germany, we have uh, right now about 80 customers. So it's not enough to create a chain big enough. So it's going to be important for a producer. And on the other hand, um, not all of the 80 uh, stores would like to join. So there's probably going to be like 20, 30 stores. And the number is too small to do it. And the markets are so different, like UK from Germany are two different markets. Different producers are selling best, different products is selling best. So you have to make totally different strategy for this market. And for 20 stores, it's not going to be good enough. That's why uh, we started in Netherlands as well, because there's 200 clients. So it's pretty OK. But the other markets like Belgium, like Germany, like Scandinavia, there's less than 100 clients per country. So it's not going to be sufficient to establish a chain to put all the marketing involvement in this. So it's going to be a good business. So for us, the Food Plus is going to be in the UK. It's going okay. to be in the Netherlands and probably on the other markets, not as well. But okay. as a chain in the UK, it works extremely well because what we are uh, trying to do and we accomplished is we created a chain that the producers know. They want to invest in it. They want to put the money uh, to give it to the uh, individual stores. And this is something that those stores couldn't get otherwise. Okay. So we have all this marketing stuff and we have special promotions right now just for them, prepared for the producer. And they wouldn't do it for a single store, no way, or for like 10 stores. But they do it for 200 stores because it's a big enough thing for them. The, uh, the other thing that is important that uh, most uh, products that we sell like food in Poland is um, is sold by the uh, sales representative of the producers. But those sales representative doesn't exist in the UK because the Polish producer doesn't have sales representatives in other markets. So you need something to drive the sales in this market and you need to promotional leaflets, you need uh, special promotions and stuff like that. And this is why uh, this chain is so important for this market. Gotcha. So for the students listening or watching now, in, in terms of looking at this particular challenge, I'd say go in the, the um, route of trying to expand the uh, the Food Plus stores probably is not what they're looking for. It's trying to expand the, the resale business into new marketplaces. 
So, you know, as one of the advantages of X culture, we've got students from around the world. So you're going to know some markets that maybe Michael and Master Media don't know that well now. You can help us understand. This but is don't, actually don't... The, the, main, the main thing because we understand the European market because we're close to it and it's pretty, it's pretty obvious for us. It's a little different country to country, but we pretty much know how we can operate there. Right. But other continents is totally unknown. Of course, we can get some things through internet. We can go there for like a short trip and stuff like that. But it's not going to be the idea that you have if you live there. If you live for, let's say, in the UK, in the in the United States, you're going to have far more understanding of how this market works or, you know, how the store works and everything. And we're looking for some ideas from this place uh, for like uh, South America. We really don't know. Right. We are thinking about Brazil. But for us, it's totally unknown. So if you if you show us something that is going to be interesting for us and is going to need more focus on that, then go there to see how it works, to talk to you, to stuff like that. This is something we're looking for, a different yeah, idea we, for a different angle. We have students from Asia, Africa, Australia, and we should have some very interesting things. So again, a message from the client. Europe is okay, but they understand that pretty well. So unless you know something that they don't know, which you probably don't. I, I would concentrate in other geographic areas on the food resale business, which is a really big universe. And as you heard, Michael every said, other continent is unknown for us. We sell some to Australia, some to Asia, but it's literally so small that it's it's nothing almost. So we're looking for anything outside that. To, to help the, the students understand something about the culture of the company, there was a story they told me, Michael. I wasn't. I'm not sure if you were in the media at the time about the name Master Media because I was. I always, Fascinated by name. It's called Master Media <laughs> and Food. It made no sense to me. So I asked the question, what do you mean? Do you mind telling that story so the students can understand yeah. the, the, the DNA? Yeah, of it's, it's it's really uh, a little funny because um, this is what I told you about the beginning of Master Media. Master Media was a small company, free people only. So every single thing that cost something, it was an important thing. You, and in Poland, to start a company back then, it had cost you to establish a company, to have a name, to do things like that. So one of the owners uh, had a father who already owned the company, which was called Master Media. So it was easier for them to get this company and to work under the this company name and to start a business under this company name because it was faster, it was cheaper, it was easy. Nobody was thinking that it's, Master Media is going to be so big that it's going to be important. For them, it was just, okay, let's place some name on the invoices because we have to. So they placed the name that the father owned company, which was doing some, uh, you know, television sets, some products like that was selling. But they decided it's good enough for now to establish that. And when that started going well, and better and better. Nobody was thinking about the marketing, the strategy, the stuff like that. So it was Master Media at the beginning. The all invoices were on Master Media, and it stuck like that. And it's <laughs> funny right now because whenever we talk to some people who know what's Master Media, everybody's thinking we are at media or at selling television sets and Social stuff media like company. that. <laughs> we are actually thinking about rebranding, but it went too far. It's 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 <laughs> too well known right now to change it. But it's. It's misleading at, at least. Yeah, I think I think that the number they quoted me was something like US fifteen thousand to to incorporate under a new name. Oh, they wow. just didn't have the money. They just wanted to go ahead and get into business and see where it went. And yeah, it's it's business. it's just like you know, it was something like right now we are a pretty big company, so we're thinking about marketing stuff like that. And if we're thinking right now, nobody would do such thing. Nobody <laughs> would do such thing. We would change the name probably pretty fast and stuff like that. But nobody like 15 years ago was thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just make it happen. Or as Nike says, just do it. <laughs> yes. We Chris, have... any questions before I ask some more? Go ahead. Yes, we have. Um, and guys, you can feel free to raise your hand and like talk to the, you know, Mr. Michael directly. Um, we have a question from Deborah. She says, does the company only operate through partnerships? Because you keep mentioning partnerships. Where's she from, by the way? Um, she didn't mention. Um, Deborah, if you would like to raise your hand, please, you can share where you're from and, you know, we'll give it a minute. Oh, yeah, she did. 
Yay. Okay. Welcome. Okay, so where are you from? Where are you from, Deborah? I'm from Ghana. Ghana, all right. Thanks for joining us. Great. Um, answering your question, uh, it's not like only we work with partners, but most of the, our clients, uh, when we're starting different markets, it uh, becomes our partners. I t I'm telling partners because we, we see it this way. Some of them are just really our clients, but we treat them as partners because there's always possibility that they're going to be somebody more than just a client in this market like that. So when we go to the market that we know, we have mostly clients, but when we go to another market, we're looking for somebody who's going to be our client at first, but maybe someone more than that. Because uh, for us, when we go to a big market, and let's say it's going to be Canada or the United States, uh, we're not looking for a single client, but because single client is probably not going to be enough to go through all the things that we need to go through. Uh, so we're looking for somebody who can deliver us a little more than just be a one client. But we're not only working with partners. So it's uh, we're usually doing most of the job ourselves, but we're open for the cooperation, not only selling goods to the, to the clients uh, on this new market. Michael, when you use the word partner, we're not talking about any kind of ownership between the two companies, no. are we? No, no it's, it's just, just we're giving them special treatment and it's just a partner as we mostly we are agreed that we're not going to be competing with them on the market so they feel safe because right. uh the mostly feared thing is that like a big company like Master Media, that we're gonna start something uh, with this partner and then we're gonna take over from there because if we see there's enough money there. We're going to establish our own warehouse. We do it ourselves and we just simply cut them off. So we want to establish that we're working as partners, that we don't do such things because we really, uh, we believe in long-term partnership with those, uh, with those customers. So we try to, to show them how we operate on different markets to feel, to make them feel safe because for us, it's the most important because we want them to make good decisions and we want them to expand and operate. And if they're afraid, they're not going to expand enough uh, for us to make a good business. Yeah, they won't share certain things with you either. Gotcha. Deborah, do you, do you have any other parts of your question or is it answer your question? Um, it has been answered. Thank Are you. Are you going to find a good spot for Master Media in Ghana? Exactly. I'll do that for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm waiting Deborah, for that. What, what time is it in Ghana right now? Um, it's 12 9 p.m. Oh. Okay, you're only a few hours ahead. Cool. Other questions, Shristi? Yes, we have a lot. Um, okay, so let us go to uh, Nana again asks, Nana Saki, um, sh they ask, is cultural differences not that worrying for your firm? And if a yes, ask her if she can come on, Shristi, see if she wants to come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah let, let it, um, Nana, if you're here, please raise your hand and I'll let you speak yourself. If you have a camera, put your camera on. You you get to yeah. see I'm an old guy, but I want to see you guys too. Welcome. Hey, Nana. Where are you from, Nana? Hi, Nana. Where are you from? I have an audio problem. Um, okay. What's your question, Shristi? I will read it. Um, she's asking, are cultural differences not that worrying for your firm? And if so, what are some initiatives that have been taking place to tackle that? Yeah, um, right now, we're working mostly in Europe and uh, like 80% of the people who work there are Polish. Uh, we have a lot of Ukra Ukrainian right now and we are starting to have some different cultural thinking uh, with the religion, with the language, with stuff like that. So we're just, uh, I, I would say, at the beginning of those cultural differences. With our customers, it's mostly right now operating in Europe, and it's not that different from country to country. There are little differences, but it's not that big. But uh, right now, we have some first uh, sales to, the, to uh, China, to Hong Kong, and it's starting. And it's something that we are preparing right now for. Uh, but we didn't uh, take any steps yet as master media because it's not as big of a deal. 
but uh, I believe in next two, three years, it's going to be a real issue. So we are talking with our uh, human resource department about that right now. And it's going to be something that we have to focus on probably in the next two, three years. But right now, since it's mostly Europe and it's mostly the people uh, that are pretty similar, it's not a, such an issue. Yeah, and I think one of the things also is you're using partners in, in those different countries. So that helps buffer you a little bit. I mean, you've got to deal with the partner, but the partner's dealing with the end customers and the stores where a lot of cultural things would come in. It's much easier. Of course, we have some differential because some owners of the stores from Polish stores, because I didn't mention that, but it's uh, about 50% of the owners of Polish stores in Europe are Polish, but the rest of them is not Polish. A lot of them are from Middle East. A lot of them are from like uh, Turkey, Iraq, Iran. So there are differences, but people who are working on those markets are sales representatives. They are working with them for six, six eight years, and it has to be a little different, but um, like they're living in the UK, so they're a little... They have a little buffer. Our people live in the UK and already have a, uh, a history with them. So they have a little buffer. So it's not that huge, but there are some differences to, to be exact. Gotcha. Okay. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't able to speak, but I think she did have another question. Um, so is this is the cultural differences one of your main challenges or are there other like key challenges you're currently facing as an organization? The cultural thing, it's its not the greatest issue. The greatest issue is that we want to expand on uh, a lot of different markets because we want to expand to the United States and America. We have a lot of introduction with the people from Asia. And uh, we have our core business, which is Europe right now. And we have to do really many, many things to change in the organization because we were prepared to uh, we were prepared to serve the small stores, 1,000 small stores. And there, our whole company is prepared to do to work in this way. And right now we need to work with fewer clients on the other continents. They need different things. They need bigger volumes uh, with a smaller amount of products. They need totally different service that we have for those markets that we already operate with. Uh, and this is the main issue to, to change as much as we can. So be open to the new possibilities, but not to lose focus on our main market because our main market is giving us money all the time right now. So we want to expand, but not to lose sight on core. And it's pretty, pretty hard, you know, High difficulty task because there's a lot of uh, things to have to be changed in the system that we have those changes interact with all the things that we are doing right now and there's like 20 big projects which are going on in the same time and most of those projects need the same people so you have to choose yeah, your spots because it's not yeah. so easy to hire new people because you need to people who have uh, enough experience in those uh, areas to know what they're doing so not to make too many changes because some changes are changing uh, a lot of things uh, that are working good right now so this is our main thing to focus on the most important products not to do too much to pick few spots that we want to go pretty hard because like tim said when we're doing something we're doing something on full speed we want to do it full speed to have no problem with that, but we have to choose carefully those spots and uh, take people. Um, Nana, are you able to speak now, or did we end? Did Mr. Michael? Uh, yes, okay. I can speak now. So that's one of the problems we are facing in Ghana. It's connection problem. Okay, so I wanted to know if since you go, you you are trying to go global. Don't you face kind of um, cultural differences problems? And what are some of the solutions you put in place for, to solve such problems? Could we go repeat, please, because I lost, uh, lost yeah. hearing. Let something. me take that one, Michael. So, man, I, I think he answered that when he said, while there are cultural issues, that is not the biggest challenge at this point. 
one because they use partners that go into new markets, but you know the the finding new markets to expand into is is the biggest challenge here. And that once they find those, they they'll do things internally to try to address the cultural things. If I could, just so we don't repeat on that one. So I, I wouldn't get overly hung up at this stage on on the cultural aspects. Yes, it's important, but probably not the biggest challenge at this point. Okay. Michael, while we're waiting, could could you talk a bit about competition? Yeah, we have. Who do you view okay. as your competitors, and how how they compete against you? Okay, so it depends. Uh, it depends on the market. Actually, on our main uh, market, which is UK, we have uh, Spijarnia, which is pretty similar to our company. They're like half as big as we are, but they're doing pretty much in the same model that we are operating in. So we're competing on like service level prices, uh, assortment and stuff like that. Okay. And there are a few companies who are operating straight from Poland. So they don't own warehouses in the UK on other markets. They just go straight from Poland, from the warehouse in Poland, directly to the stores, which is not as convenient model as it is, but it's cheaper. Okay. So it's a little different. So we are competing mostly with those, uh, with those companies. Uh, we have about 50% in the market share in the UK, in Netherlands, in those main markets. Uh, Spijarnia has about 25 to 30%. And the rest of the companies are smaller ones, uh, which are focusing on the market. There are some uh, stores which are um, buying product directly from Polish producers themselves. But it's fading right now, and most of them is uh, transferring to us or our competition because it's too much headache, especially after Brexit. It's too much headache, too much paperwork and stuff like that. But um, our biggest competitor is Spijarnia, which is working pretty much as we are. So there's always something, you know, to have a new idea. Like we, uh, like I told you two years ago, we started ordering by phone, which is a huge hit. And they need to work for that. And after a year, they establish that themselves. So we're always competing on something which is more, uh, you know, better for the store, easier for the store. Uh, and we're looking for some kind of solutions, which is good, especially right now, digital solutions, because most of the people are using either uh, cell phones or uh, palm tops or whatever they are in the yeah. store. So we're looking for digital use uh, of those things. Can customers order? From you via phone now? Uh, like right now, there's yeah. 90% of the orders is uh, ordered by phone. I gotcha. And, and Spurnyanya, that, that that's a Polish company also? Spurnyanya is a company which has like one kilometer from us. Okay. So two biggest distributors in the UK are from like one mile away. <laughs> Okay, actually, about, the you. owners were in the university together in the same year. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they all knew each other in, in universities. Friendly competitors? Yeah, that's, you know, that's the ego things and stuff like that. So everybody <laughs> wants to be. Because Spijarnia was actually first one. They were first one. Okay. We started like two years after them, but we quickly uh, grew and uh, we became bigger. But they were the first one. Excellent. Tracy, maybe we have about five more minutes. Do you have a couple of questions? Um, we have a couple of repeating questions. So let's okay. combine those or similar questions. Um, we have a question from Anthony um, as well as uh, Phineas. They're asking about how the company is taking advantage of social media for, I guess, marketing and getting the brand out there, as well as how does data analytics and marketing automation tools enhance your marketing uh, campaigns? So um, once again, we as Master Media for a long time didn't advertise ourselves at all because we believe that it's not necessary for us or for our customers to know who's Master Media because we were getting directly to the owners of the stores through our sales representatives and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, it's changed when we wanted to go global. Because right now it's important for us to people know who's master media that we can uh, deliver goods all over the world. So right now our marketing strategy is changing. So we are using our social media more to show uh, 
first of all, that we can deliver everything globally. We need to prepare some solutions for the, like I told you, the big events that we are going to everybody know who's master media. We're preparing catalogs, uh, what's master media. We are preparing demo uh, sites for the ordering. So right now uh, it's going to be ready in about two weeks. So you can go to the website and see a demo uh, of our B2B platform. So for everybody else, who, if he can go to this demo and see how pro what products do we have, how to order them, how to do the stuff like that. And we're trying to show it in our uh, social media. So in Facebook, Instagram and stuff like that, we are showing that we are there. Uh, for the existing uh, customers, we are focusing more of uh, their client then marketing to them. So we're doing things for the Foot Plus and stuff like that to attract the customer to their stores, not for us, but for them. So we're doing a lot of things that they can post on their social media. We're preparing social media for the stores if they want us to. So they, they uh, let us to run their platforms, run their social media to do it all together uh, with one big thing. But also we prepare a lot of marketing things and a lot of marketing content to put on the social media of the stores. So we're focusing mostly on bringing people to their stores, not to uh, show them that master media is best for them. Because on those markets, they know us. We don't need to, you know, uh, we don't need to introduce ourselves. So we're not focusing on showing who we are. Like in the Great Britain, Last year, there was like 15 new Polish stores open. That, that's it, because most of the, pro, the stores are already there. There's over 800 Polish stores in the UK, so the market is filled with stores. It's not like new stores open, so we don't need to uh, advertise that much as master media, but we need to advertise and help them to go online. We uh, prepared the store uh, which is selling online, and we want to do it as a foot plus. So we are uh, doing a lot of advertising of this concept as well. So you can shop in those stores that we have. You can shop online with Food Plus and stuff like that. So we mostly uh, using social media to those kind of things, not to uh, not to advertise Master Media itself. Michael, I think the second part of the question was data analytics in terms of what you guys look at, what customers are buying from you. Size of the market, you know, why why you stock certain products versus others? Anything you can talk so, about there? Yeah. So what we what we are doing is uh, first of all we establish few of our own stores because we wanted to know more about the market. So we own as Master Media right now nine stores uh, across Europe. Uh, we have special system in there to see what their customers are buying, how the promotion works. We analyze all the data uh how much like uh fresh bread how much is it in the sales of the store and how much liquor and uh, what the promotions of the drinks is doing to the sweets and stuff like that so we're basically working on those data because we need exact data and the problem with the polish stores is that they don't own exact data because most of the stores is not working on the professional system they don't put everything in the system, so they really don't know what they're selling. Like they're selling an item. They don't know that they're selling Sprite to litter. Uh, but we wanted those information and to gather those, uh, we had to arrange our own stores to have a special system which control every single product that we sell, how it sells, how the margin look like. So this is our, this is our place when we use the data from to then place it on the, on the, other, uh, on the other stores. Uh, and what we are doing, of course, is we're checking uh, how the product sells in the whole market. Like, like when we say UK, we have 700 clients there. So we'll check what's the best seller. And this is the best seller like Schmitana uh, Piontnica, which is sour cream. It sells the best. We are looking why the 200 stores is not buying this from us. There's a gap. So we go to those stores and tell them, this is the best selling product in this category. In the dairy category, this is the number one product. So when our sales representative goes there, he sees if he has the dairy category, he needs to have this product and he can share the data and tell the stores, which are really important for them because, you know, top 30 products, is not a problem, but it's like when you say, what's the best selling juice? 
of course, there's orange and there's apple. But what's the third one? Most of the stores doesn't know. And what we can give that to them is to show them that from 700 stores, the third most selling is a grapefruit. So if you want to know what's third, fourth, and fifth, we tell you this is the best selling. So if you have a place for five, this is the five you're supposed to have. So this is the data that we are giving to our sales representatives and they go to the customers, they talk with them and tell them what to do with it, what to, they can you know, do better in the stores. And it was actually a pretty important thing because uh, about four years ago, there was a lot of Romanian people who start coming to the UK and they became a large group of customers in Polish stores. But some of the Polish stores didn't care for that because they said it's not important. Yeah, the Romanian are coming, they're calling Polish products. But we showed them on the data how much are they buying in those stores that they establish a, Polish, a Romanian shelf in the Polish stores. And right now, 90% of the Polish stores has a Romanian shelf in it because we gave them the data that it's such a big business that it cannot uh, you know, just make it go away. And this is the thing that we are working on. Michael, the nine stores, are, are those part of the Food Plus network in uh, the UK? Yeah. Or the, uh... Yes, right now, yes, but it's it's owned by us. Uh, but it's right now, it's the sales are pretty small, but it's growing rapidly. And we treat it like uh, we try to find some solutions. We try to see how it operates. We believe it's going to be big, but it's going to be bigger in about two, three years. Right now, it's relatively small. For the whole UK, the sales of the online store is compared to sales of one store. So it's it's not big. Yeah, maybe I'm not sure. You, you mentioned about you guys own nine stores. Are those all in the UK? Five of them are in the UK. Four of them are in Germany. Okay. So, so you've gone into different markets to understand that market. Yeah. Okay. So, so it, in theory, a recommendation could be if you went to a new market, maybe you buy a small store also to help you gather some data at the customer level. The market is big enough for like, we don't have it in, in Belgium because we decided the market's not big enough. But when we started to work with Germany, we saw the market is big enough that we want to know more about this market. That's why we decided to open four of those stores to have a better understanding of the customer, of what sells, how is it different from the UK and stuff like that. So uh, it depends on the market. Right now in Scandinavia, we're not planning, uh, planning any stores, but in Germany, those stores are going to be there because it's important for us. It's a big enough market to have. Are they Food Plus stores in Germany or under a different yes, name? Yes, all of them are Food Plus. Okay, okay. But but so in theory, if you went in to say you were talking mentioned Brazil before, that that you might consider a Food Plus store just to help you get data at a customer level. If you went into the U.S. at some point, there might be a store or two in different locations. It's possible, but we have to we have to be sure that we're going to operate it properly. Yeah. Because uh, in Germany, uh, we can operate it because Germany is uh, is pretty close to Poland. So we have people go and they pretty pretty often just to show how to run those store, uh, to check everything's working well. To go to Brazil and do it, we would have to need, we would have to, I don't know, probably have about seven to eight people operating there just right. to know. And we would have to take them from Poland, take them to Brazil which is going to be a big project. If we decide that Brazil is a big enough market for us to do so, it's possible, but I'm not saying it's going to be at the beginning. Yeah, I understand. Got you. Okay. Sharice, Dave, we're about out of time. I mean, any last questions before uh, we'll let Michael go back to work and grow his business? We have about seven questions, but know that we do have a uh, like a, a question and answer feature when we post the document, so you guys can also answer your questions, uh, get, ask your questions there. Um and let's see one last question um we have from an anonymous attendee you made yeah. the mention of not buying some products directly from producers but also not selling directly to stores is there a long change of intermediaries or middlemen affecting your pricing for your products it depends on the product we are trying to have two mostly so us and somebody else because free parties is usually too big of a margin gap, which is not going to sell good on the market because there's too many intermediates. But uh, like I told you, 90% we're buying directly from the producers. So there's only about 10% that we're not buying directly from them. And uh, to be honest, sometimes the price is better than from the producer, but it's it's a different story. <laughs> uh, but it is that way. 
but on the markets that we are working, it's usually we are selling directly to the store or there's somebody else, but just one. It's not like then and another one and another one. So usually there's us to the store or us to somebody who delivers to store, not more. Thank you. Well, we've reached the magic hour. Michael, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. This has been very fascinating. And for all the students who are online, thank you for your interest. Make sure you pick Master Media. It's going to be the best company this, this semester. Shristi, thank pleasure. you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure as always, Tim. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I hope you guys pick Master Media. It's a really interesting subject. And you'll see when you read the document, it's really interesting things to do. So believe Michael, the sky is the limit. And I hope you are doing well. Michael, send you some Polish sausages. Of course. <laughs> we take care of our people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Tell Martha. Thank you Thank very you much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.